Broadcast Network, After Buzz TV. Over 20 million weekly downloads in over 150 countries, and your number one source for after show entertainment. <laughs> TV, the destination for TV superfans, producing after shows for over 300 of your favorite TV shows, interviewing celebrities and showrunners, and bringing you behind-the-scenes exclusives. All thanks to E! Entertainment's Maria Menounos, producer Kevin Undergaro, and internet leader Akamai. Now, let the buzz begin! Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. This is your turn, of course, to AfterBuzz TV. This is our special programming spotlight on, and I am your host, Lim Gonzalez. I first want to let you know that you can subscribe to AfterBuzz TV. Go to youtube.com backslash AfterBuzz TV. You can also subscribe uh, to YouTube channel and to SoundCloud. And as always, you can uh, live tweet us, uh, and we're going to use the same hashtag we use for our Preachers of Detroit, and that's at hashtag ABTV Preachers of Detroit. Um, I'm very, very excited. We have a special guest here. Um, this man, first of all, is my favorite character <laughs> on Preachers of Detroit. Um, this is none other than Pastor David Bullock. How you doing, sir? I'm doing great. So good to be on the After Buzz TV network. Yes, sir. Yeah, yes. love it. Love yeah. it. Yeah, we are very excited to have you. Um, so glad you're uh, doing this interview. I just kind of want to uh, talk about, you know, what you have going on. Um, first of all, I want to kind of give some background. Um, you know, I did my research. All right. All right. Uh, so first of all, you are the pastor of Greater St. Matthew Baptist Church. That's right, in uh, Highland Park. In Highland Park, Michigan. Uh, you also are a former NAACP president in the Detroit chapter, correct? Well, the, the Highland Park chapter. The Highland Park actually chapter. Actually reactivated that chapter and, okay. uh, when I first got to Highland Park at, in the church. Okay, mm -hmm. excellent. Uh, you've also been on TV prior to Preacher of Detroit. You've been on the Rachel Maddow Show. That's right. You've been on the uh, Ed Show. That's right. Um, and you're also a graduate of a school I also went to, Morehouse College. Okay, yeah. Um, so uh, exciting. And of course... The big thing right now is you are one of the preachers uh, on the Preacher of Detroit. That's right. Um, which is a show that we cover here at After Buzz TV. Mm -hmm. Very excited. We've got some great response. Um, I kind of want to talk about that and kind of just open up the interview with that. What made you decide to kind of be part of uh, something like this? We've had Preachers of LA, mm -hmm, um, which mm -hmm. did two seasons mm -hmm. um, and had a really great response. Um, so I remember that they were talking about doing Preacher of Detroit. So I thought that would be interesting uh, to kind of give a different perspective of that. What made you decide you wanted to be a part of that? Well, let me say, you know, I watched Preachers of LA season oh. one okay. and saw a little bit of season two. Uh -huh. And, you know, I loved I loved it. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I was worried about it. Really? Yeah. Why is that? <laughs> I mean, as a pastor, you know, watch it. Uh, Bishop Noah Jones, who I've seen preach many times. Uh -huh. and of course, Diedrich is from Detroit, lives right. in L.A. And, um, you know, I wondered if the platform was the right platform for promoting the church. Okay. And, and you know, but I got over that. You know, mm -hmm. I watched it. I loved it. Fell in love with it. Mm -hmm. And so then when the opportunity came to the city of Detroit, I think there were some other cities being looked at. Right. You know, uh, New Orleans. Okay. Uh, Baltimore. Okay. Detroit. You know, Detroit shone through. Mm -hmm. You know, I think we got a great cast, and um, they were looking for somebody a little younger. Okay. Somebody definitely single. Okay. Uh, and somebody uh, who has some turn up. Okay. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so, well, they definitely found the right person. <laughs> so, turn up for right. real. You know, so the interview, the first interview was funny because right. I remember the first interview, and I'm, I'm Skyping in, uh -huh. you know, to a casting director or whatever, uh -huh. and... Uh, Man, she asked me a question, and, uh -huh. and I said something, uh -huh. and she just, the, the camera flipped over. Really? She was like, oh, my God, we got to get him. Wow. We gotta, oh, you sold. He's on the board. Sold. We don't, we don't know what else we're doing. Okay, but he's, he's on. on the board. That's it. You know, so uh, it's just been a fun ride. I'm enjoying it. Excellent. It's great. Excellent. Um, what has been, um, going back to, you know, you're obviously a pastor of a, a church, a very prosperous church mm -hmm. uh, there, like you said, in Highland Park. Um, what has been the response from, and it's, we're in two episodes in now. Right. Uh, what's been the response from like the church family, like your your members, your flock? Um, how has that been, them seeing their pastor on television kind of in this light? No, that, that's a great question. I think it's it's been wonderful. The church mm -hmm. has really risen to the occasion. They put okay. their arms around me. Okay. Um, there's a there's a pride in the ministry. Mm -hmm. You know that was there latent, but now it's starting to be manifested. And mm -hmm. uh, you know uh, they're excited about the church being on TV. They're excited about 
uh, you know, me being on TV. Of course, mm -hmm. of course, they've seen me on TV before. Right. In the local right. market, on the news, because okay. of the work that we do. Rachel sure. Maddow, Ed Schultz, RT, other 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 uh, television networks, mm -hmm. and they also have seen me in the middle of controversy. Okay. And I ran for city council in 2013 in okay. Detroit. You know, um, very active and vocal against some of the things that were going on politically. Mm -hmm. And so the church is used to going to work and people talking about their pastor. Okay. Right. Um, now, of course, the social media uh, <laughs> and the phone calls have escalated. Right. But but, I'm sure. but but the church is used to it. And then I had a meeting. You know, we did some prep. Once I okay. knew this was coming down the pike. Okay. You know, I had a series of leadership meetings mm -hmm. with the church. Um Talk to the congregation, you know, shut the door mm -hmm. before you guys go home. Just, you know, I think this is coming our way. Mm -hmm. You know, let's be prayerful. I think, it's, and I think it's going to be good, but uh, there'll be positives and negatives. Let's just be prepared for that. And so overall, I just celebrated 10 years pastoring. Really? Yeah, we had a banquet yesterday. Congratulations. Thank you. And uh, it was great. It was uh -huh. the best banquet we ever had. It was wow. packed full of the capacity. Mm -hmm. um, and when I walked in, the, the members of the church were like, boo la, boo la, boo la. And I was like, wow, wow, boom ba ye, boom ba ye. Oh, you they know? was getting it. Oh, they was getting it. I said, man, this is great. So so the church has really responded well. That's excellent. Um, I kind of want to talk about just you, your character on the show. Um, it appears, and you know, you, I'm sure you've seen other reality shows and reality-based shows. There's a, a similar form that kind of rises. And it typically, because um, we cover a lot of reality shows here, and, you know, I'm an avid watcher of them, there's always this, this, the one person that kind of stirs up, mm -hmm. if you will, the, the the drama or maybe the controversy or or something to that light. And it seems like you have filled that role. Um, and in, in the sense of some of the conversations that we had, like the, the powwow that you mm -hmm, had the one mm -hmm, time mm -hmm. and some of the things that you said, you were kind of challenging some of the ministers. Right, right. Um, is that just you? Like, are you just that person that is going to, if you see something that you don't like, you're going to speak up about it um, or something that you don't agree with? That's just, that's, that's Bullock. He's going to do that. That's, that's the person you are. Well, look, they call me the bulldog, you okay. know I mean? And that's not just because of the show. Okay. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm known to be highly exuberant. Okay. You know, um, okay. intellectually aware and excited at the same time. Uh huh. You know, sometimes uh, I, I use words that that trigger things in people. Sure. So I mean, I'm the turn up kid. Right. Now, that's great for TV, mm -hmm. uh, but it is who I am. Okay. You know, so I don't bite my tongue. Uh, behind the scenes, I you know I don't bite my tongue in my personal life. Right. It doesn't always work out. Maybe that's why I'm still single. Okay. Um, you know I don't bite my tongue at the ministry. Mm -hmm. Right. So so some some people hear the sermons that that I give and then don't stay. Okay. And like I tell them, you know, we there aren't there isn't a drought of churches. Mm -hmm. Right. So you know if you don't like this one, sure, you can find another one. I mean, sure. but that's just who I am. Now on the show though. I think it was a great opportunity to really mm -hmm. showcase the differences amongst ministers. A lot of times people oh, think great. all preachers are the same. I Correct. mean, but you've got apostolic background. Right. You got, you know, a Pentecostal, you've mm -hmm. got Kojic, uh, Kojic, you know, you mm -hmm. got Baptist, then sure. you got the non-denominational, then you got female bishop, right? Right. I mean, we still trying to figure out what that means, right. you know, really in terms of, mm -hmm. you know, what her influence and reach in the church is. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, you got different age groups. Right. And, uh, you know, so I represent that, that you know, hip hop. I grew up on hip hop, you, you know, and um, fight the power. Uh -huh. That's my stuff. That's you. You know, I mean, I like the West Coast stuff, too. You right. know, I grew up on Spice One, Trigger Ain't Got okay. No Heart. Okay. You know, I grew up on MC8. You uh -huh. know, I grew up on NWA, obviously. Right. You know, um, which for some people represents the gangsterism, mm -hmm. you know, and that's part of it. But it also represented this challenge to culture. Okay. So I, I came of age. In listening to music mm -hmm. that challenge things. Mm. And so my preaching and, and my way of being, right, who I am authentically mm -hmm. is fundamentally a challenger. I don't go along to get along. Mm -hmm. I believe I have to authentically raise my voice and speak my mind. Right. And, you know, I pay the cost to be the boss. Thank you, Snoop Dogg. I mean, but that's okay. <laughs> okay. You know, and I think if you look at Jesus, he's in the temple flipping over tables, mm -hmm. saying some very rough stuff. Mm -hmm. Fella comes to him and says, hey, you know, my dad died. He says, hey, well, let the dead bury the dead. Mm -hmm. That's kind of some, some tough stuff. I mean, you know, even when Lazarus was raised from the dead, Jesus mm -hmm. shows up late, and he's not apologetic at all. They're mm -hmm. like, you know, Lazarus died. And he's like, look, if you knew who I was, you wouldn't even be tripping that I was late. Right. You know, you're going to see the resurrection. Right. And, and the sister's like, I mean, I know the resurrection is coming at the end. Right. And he's like, hold on. I didn't say that. I said it's coming right now. Mm -hmm. Sit down. Move the stone away. I mean, so this is, so when I read about Jesus, I don't read about a, a, a meek, lowly, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, this is a strong he guy. He's a carpenter, son. I mean, Come yeah, on for yeah, strong exactly. hands. He knew how to use them, too. Exactly. You know, he used how to use, knew, use those tools. Absolutely. But he also, in terms of his character, mm -hmm. in terms of his message, you know, I mean, the Pharisees didn't like him. The Sadducees didn't like him. Absolutely. Rome was worried about him. Mm -hmm. I mean, why? Because he was uh, vocal. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I think ultimately, if you're going to make your mark in this world, you can't be quiet. Mm -hmm. 
I agree. Um, speaking of Jesus, I kind of want to segue into a, a quote that you had, uh -oh. and, and I'm going to paraphrase a little bit. Okay. Uh, but you said, if Jesus was black and in America, then his name would be David Bullock. That's right. Okay. So um, <laughs> can you please, sir, explain what you mean by that? Oh, man, the feedback is awesome. <laughs> Somebody said, he's Beelzebub. Oh, I really? Said, I said, I didn't even know they used that word. Anymore. Still. Yeah. Yeah. I'm right. bringing it back, maybe. <laughs> maybe they're bringing it back. Right. Throwback. Right. Throwback yeah. Harris. Right. That's how, that's how bad they felt. <laughs> right. They're bringing it back. Like... <laughs> Right. Like, Thousands of years. You know what I'm saying? Like BC. Right. I'm like, who am I? Right. You what? Never connect. <laughs> what? <laughs> Look, straight up. Number one, let me say this. Okay. It was a conditional statement. Okay. I did, it wasn't identity. Okay. It didn't say David Bullock is Jesus. Uh -huh. I didn't say that. Right. People need to listen. Mm -hmm. I said if. So, so I'm already hypothesizing. It's hypothetical. Sure. Right. Sure. I'm, I'm making a point. It's metaphorical. If Jesus was two mm -hmm. two key points here black and in America right right he wasn't he wasn't in America right. unless you're Mormon mm -hmm. right and he wasn't black unless you unless you come from the black theology tradition right right, right? so we already know I'm 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 taking poetic license okay right um you know his name would be David Bullock but why did I say that well I, one it, it was provocative but mm -hmm. two um, I come from the black theology tradition. Howard okay. Thurman, mm -hmm. who actually started a church in San Francisco. I think that church is still there. Mm -hmm. Went to Morehouse. He's a great African-American mystic. Wrote a book called Jesus and the Disinherited, okay. where he talks about how the church always has had a problem uh, giving people who are at the bottom of society tools mm -hmm. to thrive and not just survive. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, James Cone, the great black theologian. Um, who wrote a number of books, but one of them is Black Theology and Black Power, mm -hmm. where he, he deals with blackness, ontological blackness, being depressed, being exploited. You know, what does Jesus's message have to say to those who are at the bottom or those who come, say, from a tradition where they've been enslaved or right. still wrestling with social problems, right. number, number one on a lot of the negative indexes in our society? What does Jesus have to say? Mm -hmm. Cohn says stuff like this. Well, I think Jesus would be hanging out with those folks. Okay. I think Jesus would be ministering to those folks. Now, when I read the Bible, it says, I was hungry, you fed me. I was right. naked, you gave me clothes. Close. I was in prison, you came to see, see me. Him. Suffer the little children to come unto me and forbid them not for such is the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. I mean, that kind of thing. You know, the people are hungry, the disciples want to send them away. Jesus mm -hmm. says, sit them down and find what they what they have. Right. And then he feeds them. Uh, now, we want to take it a little deeper. You know, Albert Clegg, Shroud of the Black Madonna, passed away in 2000. Uh, wrote a book called The Black Messiah, where mm -hmm. he goes through and pulls out different scriptures like eyes like balls of fire, mm -hmm. feet like polished black, polished brass, mm -hmm. hair like lamb's wool. Right. You know, but I wasn't really trying to get into the color or the race. I was more so saying that if Jesus was in America, mm -hmm. right, and in the black community, he'd be he, doing the kind of stuff I'm that doing. You're doing. Right? You know, okay. and, you know, theologically, we, you know, I said Sunday, you know, well, we mm -hmm. believe Christ lives in us. Mm -hmm. So if he lives in me, what's his name? But I'm not going to, you know, mess with nobody too much. I got but you. if he lives inside of me, right. his name David Bullock. Right. And I think he should, he should for all who profess faith right. in Christ, Christ should live inside of Absolutely. all of us. Absolutely. And so instead of looking for the Jesus out there, let's actualize the Jesus in here. Got it. Okay. I mean, and, and I think now that you've explained it, I get, I got what you were saying mm -hmm. um, because, and, and it took me a minute. It took me actually until the second episode because I really got to see your passion about mm -hmm. the community and going back to that statement, I'm like, oh, okay. He's saying that if Jesus was here, he would be doing the same things that you're doing. Right. So I, I got that, right. but I can see how definitely it can be. Well, it popped in the first you know, episode. Uh, exactly. You know, and uh, you gotta, you yeah. gotta let the executive producer. Right. Oh, of course. Right. I mean, editing is magic. <laughs> editing is, is But when is it popped, real. I loved it. Yeah. And I love the white bow tie too. Okay. Because I was like, you know, you he like, probably <laughs> wear a white bow tie. Now, if you um going kind of on, on that same vein, mm -hmm. uh, in the second episode, there was uh, something else you said, which I thought was interesting. It was when it uh, was the scene where you were with uh, the young man kind of in the hood. Oh, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. And you said, and you were kind of, uh, you know, just kind of uplifting them. And you mentioned something about saying God was black. Yeah. Now, do you feel that based on what you said, you know, kind of your upbringing and kind of where you have studied, is that where you're getting that from? Where you feel that God is a black man or well, just God is black? That, well, definitely. I mean, you know, I went to Morehouse, right. um, got my master's in philosophy from Wayne State. Mm -hmm. I did uh, tons of years uh, there in a Ph.D. program mm -hmm. and um, uh, University of Chicago graduate divinity school, mm -hmm. you know, studied there as well. I mean, so there's a wealth of reading and sure. thinking about these things that mm -hmm. informs what I do and what I say. So it's not a flippant statement. No, nah, it's not a flippant. I okay. mean, and, and I know what I'm talking about, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so I'm trained. Okay. Right? But but beyond that, I serve in a high poverty 
high African American community. Right. And when you serve people, you have to serve them. Right. And mm -hmm. so, you know, if I were in a different community, I, I may have different tactics. Mm -hmm. Right. And I may tweak the message for the community I'm, I'm in. But mm -hmm. when I'm but I'm on the street. Right. Especially in that scene. Right. And that was real. Mm -hmm. Right. That that was not scripted. Mm -hmm. That was not set up. I mean, those brothers live in that neighborhood. They, they're there. Right. They're there. I mean, burnt out homes, mm -hmm. you know, very little hope. Some of them in the dope gang. Some of them, some of them on the edge of it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Some of them right. definitely connected to it. And but they stood there. We were we shot that for about two three hours. Oh really? They did not move, and, wow. and I don't know if you noticed. One of the brothers started crying. I did see that. Well, those were real tears. Those were real tears. The brother was really crying. I mean, there were multiple brothers mm -hmm. crying. Now, what did I say to them? Part of what I said to them was a dig at some people who I believe uh, are so spiritual they're silly. Mm. They talk about the spirit, mm -hmm. the spirit out there, mm -hmm. right? Well, if the kingdom of God is within, and our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit, right? Right. When well, if if I want the spirit and I got you and the spirit's mm -hmm. in you, I got the spirit. Right. So how about I just get you? Mm -hmm. Right. So people are always talking to God. Mm -hmm. Right. But how can you love me who you have not seen mm -hmm. and hate your brother and sister who you see every day? Right. I think a lot of the church is so focused on God outside mm -hmm. that we don't deal with the God inside, mm -hmm. inside ourselves and inside each other. Mm -hmm. um, so that was kind of one thing. I don't need the spirit, guys. Right. If I got y'all. Right. I got the spirit. Mm -hmm. Right. But I can have the spirit and not have y'all. Right. And then you breaking into my house while I'm breaking the spirit. <laughs> <laughs> I read Y'all and the spirit, right? Then the spirit is not y'all. Let right. me have, right? Let me get it off, right? You know. So and then and then God is a black man. Well, of course, God is a spirit, mm -hmm. right? God is not black. God is not a man, right? God does not have a gender, mm -hmm. right? Uh, they that worship words worship in spirit and truth, mm -hmm. right? But but that's just a riff on, right? There is power inside you guys, mm -hmm. right? That is divine, right? So right? it's like an association thing. Yeah, they were they were men of color. So saying that God is black is saying God is just like them. You right. can relate to them. Yeah, he's and he's in and, and God and God is in you, right? right? I mean, you have the power of God mm -hmm. in you, mm -hmm. right? God, God is God is not somewhere else, mm -hmm. right? I mean, he's inside. You mm -hmm. know, I know you may be selling dope or poor, or uneducated, illiterate, baby mm -hmm. mama drama, mm -hmm. right? But you still have the power of God in you. And if you tap into that, you can not only get out of that stuff, but you can also change the world too, mm -hmm. right? So these houses can come down, right? Right? Because being uh, with God for me is mm -hmm. not just about doing the right, having good manners, mm -hmm. right? It's, it's about societal makeover, right? Right. So what's the point of having the power of God and living next to an abandoned house? I see. Take it down. Right. If the city won't, tell you, won't give you the permission to mm -hmm. take it down, just take it down and dump all the stuff at City Hall, mm -hmm. right? Make yeah, some changes. You know, it makes, right. right. You know, because this is our community. Mm -hmm. We live here, mm -hmm. and so we don't have to ask permission, mm -hmm. right, to improve our lives. I, I, Drake, you know, I love Drake. Drake, <laughs> Drake, Drake, what did he say? He said, he said, don't ask permission, ask uh, forgiveness. Right, right, right. Forgive me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I got it. Now, you, you talked about your, uh, obviously, your background in education, mm -hmm. uh, philosophy. Uh, did you always want to be a pastor? Like, is that what you sought out to be, like, at three years old, where you were, you know, I'm going to be a pastor? Man, that's a great question. No. <laughs> Why would anybody want to be a pastor? You know what I'm saying? I don't know. No. Man. I don't know. Nah. I don't know. My, my grandfather was a pastor. Uh -huh. My father's father. Okay. Marched with Dr. King. Malcolm X sat at this table. Okay. James Cleveland, Clara Ward, all those folks. Oh, wow. My mother's father, my, mm -hmm. my maternal grandfather was a pastor. There were 200 preaching bullocks in Boston, quartet mm -hmm. groups, evangelists. I got cousins and uh, out west, out here, mm -hmm. you know. Um and so then my father's a pastor. I was raised in the home of a pastor. I memorized the Bible completely from, from beginning to end at the age of eight. Wow. Right? Because I could recite any verse. You tell me, right mm -hmm. now, I forgot most of that stuff. Obviously. You know, um, you know, I remember reading the Bible in Hebrew, mm -hmm. you know, when I was 18. Wow. Yeah, I just had like 10,000 Hebrew words and I was sitting in a room reading the Bible in Hebrew, mm -hmm. you know. So those are good times, you know. But when you come out onto the street right. and realize people don't know English. You know, you drop the Hebrew <laughs> <laughs> real quick, <laughs> real quick. Right. You say, hey, yeah. <laughs> How right? you, doing? you know, but um, I saw my father, you know, struggle as mm -hmm. a pastor. And I saw, you know, I thought, man, pastors are like weak. Mm -hmm. They get beat up on. They don't have mm -hmm. any juice. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be a lawyer. Really? Yeah. I could totally. See I wanted that. to be a lawyer. Totally. As see a, that. I said, I would be a lawyer yeah. when I grow up. Yeah. And um, my mother died when I was 15, 15 wow. and a half, 16. Uh, I I heard a calling on my life around 12. You know, mm -hmm. I was really into the church, so memorizing the mm -hmm. Bible at 8, choir rehearsal, playing the piano, all that. So I was into it. Um, I heard God call me at 12. I was at the Hamptons Ministers Conference with my father. I told mm -hmm. my dad, I said, you know what? Uh, I think I'm called to preach. And he mm -hmm. said, you think? And I said, well, let me you know, go back. So I went, came back. No, nah, you know, I, this thing is on me. I'm 12 years old. Mm -hmm. And he was like, oh, okay. So, you know, 12, 13, 14. 
mother passed. My mother died. She was 48, died of breast cancer. Now, for most people, that's a negative thing. Mm -hmm. And, of course, you know, you lose your mother. It does impact your life. Sure. But uh, it was senior year of high school. I'm 15 and a half, 16. And I went, i never forget, I went to church and I prayed. And this is what I heard God say to me. Just because you're living right don't mean you're going to be here forever. Mm. If you're called to do something, do it. So I got up and preached my trial sermon that next Sunday. That next Sunday. That next Sunday. You know, then started doing revivals around mm -hmm. the country, went to Morehouse, preached all over the South. Mm -hmm. You know, but 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 I decided that I wasn't going to be a pulpit only minister, mm -hmm. a sanctuary only minister. Mm -hmm. I wasn't going to be this. You, I mean, you got enough folks who are the priest. Right. Right. You mm -hmm. know, I was drawn to the prophetic tradition. Mm -hmm. So what happens when you when you combine Plato and prophecy, mm -hmm. right, in the sense of a prophetic speaking truth to power tradition, right, right, and you get baptized at Morehouse, and you get a heap of help in the Martin Luther King for four mm -hmm. years, you get a David Bullock, right, who says this is more than just preaching a good message right. and touching people and selling water, mm -hmm. you know, this is about what do the values of this faith mm -hmm. have to say both to our individual and our societal life, right, and we have to we have to take that and and, and make that relevant, mm -hmm. you know, for the times. Mm. So that's where it started. That's where it started. Started there and then just, yeah. just 12, started. 12, uh, trial summer 15. Mm -hmm. You know, I started teaching my first college, cl college class at 19. Mm -hmm. So it was like, you know, the, the combination of the philosophical mm -hmm. passion, right. you know, and this spirit of speaking truth to power. Right. And, and so, it, you know, of course, the church helped me because... Mm -hmm. When I first got to Greater St. Matthew 10 years ago, mm -hmm. they didn't know what I was talking about. They're so, like the viewership. So right? the church was already established when you... Church, the church is... Well, we celebrate 55 years. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I'm the third pastor of the You're church. The third pastor. And um, he, we had a rough time. You did. They tried to kick me out about eight times. Really? Get out. Just being radical? Bye. And, really? By, we, what are you talking about? I remember somebody asked me, what's this old black and church thing you talking about? And then mm. I remember one of the mothers said, are we Baptists? I said, you've been baptized. You know me. I'm, <laughs> right, you know, right, people, right, right. You couldn't imagine yeah. that, right? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Ten years ago. Absolutely. 27. Right. Right. You know, I have no filter. Uh-huh. Right. Um, and so it was rough early on. But what's amazing is that a lot of those people stayed. Really? And now they're marching. We march, oh. they march. Wow. Right? We have just as many people march as come on Sunday morning. Mm -hmm. Right? Feed. The feeding program, the church mm -hmm. runs that. That's all volunteer driven. Wow. They then they remind me, you know mm -hmm. we're feeding. They didn't mm -hmm. bring enough meat. Right. Reverend, we need some more meat. That's your job. Right. Raise the money to get some more food. We pass <laughs> it out. You go get the you know, and I'm like, wow, this is amazing. Right. To you know, because people always say what people won't do. Mm -hmm. It's amazing to see people begging. Mm -hmm. Begging to pass out clothes. Mm -hmm. Right? Begging to pass out food. You know, we need bre We serve breakfast on Sunday. We need breakfast every Sunday. When the next March, right. you know, what about the workers' pensions, the mm -hmm. bankruptcy in Detroit, which was a huge issue? Mm -hmm. People coming to church, right? You need to do a sermon on the bankruptcy. Hmm. And I'm like, really? Y'all would wow. listen to that? Wow. Yeah. We saw you on the news talking about it. Mm -hmm. It's affecting our lives. We came up in the automotive industry. We mm -hmm. retired from Chrysler. Chrysler right. went bankrupt, messed up my pension. We, what's, what are we going to do about this stuff, mm -hmm. Reverend? Uh, I remember telling somebody, you know, we close crack houses now. Mm -hmm. Church wow. folk. Wow. After church. Really? I, I made the announcement. You know, y'all bring a change of clothes next week. We got some work to do. They wow. thought we was going to plant a garden. I right. didn't tell them what we was going to do. <laughs> you know, but there's a crack house down the street. We got to mm -hmm. go. You know, I told the police. And I went to see the brothers, and mm -hmm. I told them, I said, we're coming down Sunday. Y'all can leave before we get there. Right. Right? And I uh, had the truck from Home Depot and everything. Shut it down. Lowe's, ham and nails, put a barbecue pit out there. Wow. Gave all the kids hot dogs. And sh get out the house, and we boarded it up. Wow. And they, they were gone. Wow. Yeah, so that's the kind of work that we do. But I don't, that's not me. That's the church. Mm -hmm. I tell people, you know, some churches sing well. Right. Right? Some churches you know, do TV well. Some mm -hmm. churches have great youth ministries. Right. We got to shut down the crack house ministry. That's right. what we do. That's like, what you, you do. got issues, right. you call us. Right, we'll come, you we'll, come, we'll take, come care take care of it. I see. Yeah. Um, I want to kind of uh, segue into uh, talking about the city of Detroit a okay. little bit. All right. And um, in going going back to the show, this was the, the last episode that we watched. Uh, and I was trying to understand, and I almost did some research, but once I knew that we were doing this interview, I was like, let me go to the source. Mm -hmm. uh, but there was a point that you were really trying to drive home, um, which kind of where this whole rally kind of came about, I feel, is because of the voting situation. Right. Um, and some people not being able to vote. Can you really explain what that means? Because I really, I was like, how are people not able to vote when they live in that city? Um, can you explain how that works? No, that's great. And it, it's a complicated issue. I try to do my best. Um, voter suppression was a Nash, was on the national um, 
you know, mindset okay. a couple years ago mm -hmm. where there were these voter ID laws being passed, mm -hmm. you know, and certain people couldn't vote. And that got all of the attention. But while that was happening in Michigan, there, there wasn't voter suppression. There was voter suspension. Hmm. We had, there, was, there was a law called Public Act 4, and um, that law created emergency managers. Okay. A guy by the name of Kevin Orr is the most famous one. The emergency manager had all the power. So um, mayor, city council, police chief, fire chief, judges, county exec, all rolled into one person. Really? Right. And no accountability. Uh, nobody can tell him no except the governor. Okay. All right. So that's an emergency manager. Okay. One person has all the power. So if one person has all the power, if I elect my mayor and my mayor doesn't have any power, what's the point? If I elect, elect my city council, my city council doesn't have any power, no, what's the point? Right. If I elect judges, they don't have any power, what's the point? And then if this person is not elected, right, they mm -hmm. would just report to the governor. Right. Right. Then they can do whatever they want to do. It's called emergency manager. It happened in about five or six cities okay. in Michigan, Detroit being the biggest one. And so we were fighting against that because even after the emergency manager left and Detroit comes out of bankruptcy, all the rules that the emergency manager put on the books, all the executive orders, trumped the city charter. Really? So the city charter that we voted on in uh, 2010, mm -hmm. right, is superseded by the executive orders of the emergency manager. Why is that important? Well, when we were in Ferguson, uh, because of what happened to Mike Brown, everybody was calling for citizen oversight for the police department. Mm -hmm. In the Detroit City Charter, you actually have citizen oversight of the police department. You Citizens do. elect seven of the 11 police commissioners. Hmm. But the emergency manager side signed an executive order that gave the police department to the mayor and took all the power away from the police commissioners. Mm -hmm. So they have no power. So, hmm. you know, you have these interesting situations in the city of Detroit where the city charter does, is not even in play. It mm -hmm. doesn't count, wow. right? So you're reading the charter. It says, the charter says this has to happen. Mm -hmm. They say, well, no, the emergency manager has an executive order that trumps that. Wow. The charter says that we're supposed to get a pension check. Well, no, the emergency manager cut a deal through the bankruptcy that says, no, actually, you guys got a, got a tax clawback on all of your pension checks. Wow. wow, right, and you don't get any more. You have no more health benefits. The emergency manager signed in the law, so you guys agree to that in the bankruptcy. You have no health benefits. So you have uh, people who retired from the city of Detroit, no health care, wow. reduced pensions, uh, work rules being changed in terms of how people can be hired and fired, mm -hmm. all the minority provisions that follow money, mm -hmm. right, so that 50% of Detroiters have to be hired, HUD Section 3 requirements. None of that stuff is in play. Mm -hmm. right? so, that, so there are a lot of things that are happening in the city of Detroit illegally uh, because this emergency management system was put into place. So the mm -hmm. rally, uh, and if you notice, there were elected officials there, yes, people I from around that. the state of Michigan. Right. This is, this is happening in their town, coming to say, look, we don't have the franchise mm -hmm. in Detroit, uh, and for some reason that, that's okay. Now there's a new law, Public Act 436, much, much of the same stuff's in place. But just to, to, to nail this home, to, so it hits home, in Flint right now, Flint used to get their water from Detroit. Mm -hmm. The emergency manager took Flint off of Detroit, right, and said they were going to switch Flint to a new water system. Mm -hmm. Of course, that water system it doesn't exist. They have to build it. It won't be ready until 2016 or 2017. Okay. So in the meantime, they get their water from the Flint River, okay. which is very, very contaminated because Oldsmobile and other industries used to dump their waste okay. in that river. In river. And so now the entire city of Flint has a contaminated water source. Wow. So you have people going to church using hand sanitizer and drinking bottled water. You got people taking showers and getting rashes, right? And this is a decision that was made by one person that affects all the citizens. Hmm. The mayor had no input. City council had no input. The citizens couldn't vote. Just one person willy-nilly makes the decision. And now Flint has the highest water rates in the country. So how do you raise my water rates, right. contaminate my water source, and I don't even get a say-so? It's like a catch-22. You can't win. You can't win. And now we, now Flint's a third-world country. Huh. Right? Wow. So, so this is what we're up against. Mm -hmm. And this is coming to a town near you because across the country we're going to see a movement uh, to get municipalities mm -hmm. off uh, away from their obligation to pay pensions mm -hmm. and health care. And the only really way to do that uh, is to go through either some kind of bankruptcy proceeding or implement some kind of one-person rule or create a financial commission that, that takes those, uh, those responsibilities away from government. Okay. Yeah. So what would you say um, can you do or can the people do? Because you talk about your church being a ministry uh, to kind of 
kind of combat that and using other these other officials? What can you do, or if anything, uh, to kind of take away from that? Or is it, this is just the situation as it is? Well, I think number one, I mean, I'm a man of faith, pray, mm -hmm. you know, pray about it. Okay. Uh, you know, preach about it, talk about it, you mm -hmm. know, do some research about it. I mean, familiarize yourself with what's going on. Mm -hmm. I mean, so, you know, Daniel got into the lion's den because prayer was illegal, mm -hmm. right? I mean, so ultimately, even when you read the Bible, right. folks were dealing with rules. Right. And you break the rules, you get in trouble. You right. know, Esther went to the to the king, mm -hmm. you know, told him, hey, there's this guy changing the rules. He's mm -hmm. going to kill a whole bunch of people. Mm -hmm. That's a bad rule. Right. Right. So I think people need to wake up and say, look, after you pray about it, let's look at the rules. Some of the rules mm -hmm. that we we live under are bad. Right. Right. And so what can you do? Look, go go to go to the website mm -hmm. actioncac.com. Okay. actioncac.com. Follow us on Twitter uh, at actioncac. That's the nonprofit. Of course, you can follow me, D Alexander B. Mm -hmm. Go to my website as well, davidalexanderbullock.com. Mm -hmm. uh, we post information at least weekly about things that are going on in Michigan and around okay. the nation, sometimes even internationally. Mm -hmm. And also, there's information about the campaigns okay. that, that we're fighting. Particularly, uh, we're going to have a big conference this summer. That information will be okay. up there pretty soon for people who want to be change agents, Correct. right? And maybe come from a faith perspective or don't, mm -hmm. right? But just want to figure out how do I do organizing in my right. community in a successful way that's grassroots and that doesn't have to depend on certain kinds of monies that won't allow me to say the things that I want to say. I think okay. we've worked that model out. And so you can make the change, but you got to be the change okay. where you live. Okay. So what's next for David Bullock? I mean, you got, of course, the shows going on. Um, like you said, there's a lot of stuff buzzing around that, um, which will go on. I don't know how many episodes. We've got about 10 or 11 episodes. 10 or 11. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, you have your ministry uh, and you have the things you're doing in the community. What's next for you? The you album. You, the album. The album. What? Oh. D. Bull, the album. Please, please. David Bullock, the album. Are you serious? I play, I sing, I rap. You okay. Know? Um, we're working on some tracks right now. Okay. Uh, coming out with a Black Lives Matter mixtape. Really? In about three weeks. No way. Yeah, I've got I've got three songs on it, got some other cats on it. And it's just we just putting it together, you really? know, independent. We're just gonna throw it out. Okay. Um I got a hot track with my brother, Boss Billions, produced this track called uh -huh. I Can't Breathe. Okay. I'm singing on it. Um, you sing and, and rap, and yeah, and I'm rapping. I'm okay. the third rapper on it. Okay, I, I'm gonna shoot it to you so you can check I'll, it out. I, I want to yeah, check it out. We can play it on the show. Oh, definitely. Yeah, we can play it on oh, the after show. I think you should. Yeah, it's a hot track. Okay, my brother produced it. You know, and um, so I sing and I rap and I play. Mm -hmm. And and gospel music's cool, right. but I don't. I don't. I, that's not me. That's not you true. know uh, exclusively. I, mean, okay. I just want to make good music. Okay. So some stuff would be inspirational, gospelly. Mm -hmm. Some stuff to sound like the blues. Some okay. stuff to sound like hip hop. Just gonna be you music. Know? Just good music, Just music, you know, and uh, so we're working on that now. That's what's okay. next. I'm excited about that. Okay. We tried to get them to put some of that stuff on the show, but they, but they were like, you just got too much, Bulla. You all, <laughs> you, you just too much, Bulla. You take it over. You take it over the show. And I was yeah. like, all right, well, I, I'll just do my yeah. own thing. So, okay. you know, we're working on that. And then um going to probably release a book later on at, towards the end of this year towards as well. Year. Yeah. Okay. Well, I appreciate you having, uh, or actually uh, you being on our show. Um, it's a pleasure to meet you. Like I said, with everything that's going on with Picture Detroit, I want to make sure everybody stay tuned because you're on the show and you, for me, are my favorite part of the show. I don't know if I would watch the show if David Bullock was not on oh, the show. Oh, man, that's big. I'm just saying. Because, Tune in, though. Yeah, I want to see what David Bullock is going to say next, what he's going to do I'm going next. on a date on this yeah. show. You are you got to watch the date. Oh, man. I'm single. I'm going <laughs> on a date. I can't you wait. You gotta man. watch. That. I can't wait. We want to thank y'all for tuning in again. This has been a special one-on-one -on -one, uh, with Pastor David Block here at AfterBuzz TV. Uh, make sure that you still follow us. Um, you can follow me. I'm Lemon Gonzalez. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at the Poet Saint uh, David Block. Again, tell us where they can find you and where they can follow you and keep up with you. Twitter and Instagram, D Alexander B. Okay. Website, DavidAlexanderBullock.com. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank y'all for tuning in. We'll see you next time. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.